According to mainstream academia, hypotheses on the fate of the Neanderthals include violence from encroaching anatomically modern humans, parasites and pathogens, competitive replacement, competitive exclusion, extinction by interbreeding with early modern human populations, natural catastrophes, and a failure or inability to adapt to climate change. It is unlikely that any of these hypotheses is sufficient on its own. Rather, multiple factors probably contributed to the demise of an already low population. While the possible reasons for the Neanderthals' extinction 40,000 years ago is still greatly debated, there is ever-increasing evidence for a war between them and modern humans. Around 600,000 years ago, the family tree split in two. One group stayed in Africa, evolving into modern humans, the other headed out into Asia and then Europe, becoming Homo neanderthalensis, the Neanderthals. Technically speaking, they weren't our ancestors, but a sister species evolving on a parallel track. Neanderthals fascinate us because of what they tell us about ourselves, who we are and who we might have become. It's tempting to see them in idyllic terms living peacefully with nature and each other. Biology and paleontology, however, paint a darker picture. Far from peaceful, Neanderthals were likely skilled fighters and dangerous warriors rivaled only by modern humans. Predatory land mammals are territorial, especially pack hunters. Like lions, wolves, and our own species, Homo sapiens, Neanderthals were cooperative big-game hunters. Other predators, sitting atop the food chain, have few predators of their own, so overpopulation drives conflict over hunting grounds. Neanderthals face the same problem. If other species didn't control their numbers, conflict would have done the job for them. This territorial nature has deep roots in humans. Territorial conflicts are also intense in our closest relatives, chimpanzees. Male chimps routinely gang up to attack and kill males from rival bands, a behavior strikingly like human warfare. This implies that cooperative aggression evolved in a common ancestor of chimps and ourselves at least 7 million years ago. If so, Neanderthals would have inherited these same tendencies towards cooperative aggression. Even since the earliest discoveries of Neanderthal remains, there have been theories that they were warlike. Warfare is an intrinsic part of being human. War isn't a modern invention, but an ancient, fundamental part of our humanity. Historically, all peoples warred. Our oldest writings are filled with war stories. Archaeology reveals ancient fortresses and battles and sites of prehistoric massacres going back millennia. So, in other words, to war is human, and Neanderthals were very much like us. We are remarkably similar in our skull and skeletal anatomy and share 99.7% of our DNA. Behaviorally, Neanderthals were astonishingly like us. They made fire, buried their dead, fashioned jewelry from seashells and animal teeth, made artwork and stone shrines. If Neanderthals shared so many of our creative instincts, they probably shared many of our destructive instincts, too. The archaeological record confirms Neanderthal lives were anything but peaceful. They were skilled big-game hunters, using spears to take down deer, ibex, elk, bison, even rhinos and mammoths. It defies belief to think that they would have hesitated to use these weapons if their families and lands were threatened. Archaeology suggests such conflicts were commonplace. Prehistoric warfare leaves telltale signs. A club to the head is an efficient way to kill. Clubs are fast powerful, precise weapons, so prehistoric Homo sapiens frequently show trauma to the skull. So too do Neanderthals. Another sign of warfare is the perifracture, a break to the lower arm caused by warding off blows. Neanderthals also show a lot of broken arms. At least one Neanderthal from Iraq was impaled by a spear to the chest. Trauma 
was especially common in young Neanderthal males, as were deaths. Some injuries could have been sustained in hunting, but the patterns match those predicted for a people engaged in intertribal warfare, which is basically small-scale but intense prolonged conflict dominated by guerrilla-style raids and ambushes. War leaves a subtler mark in the form of territorial boundaries. The best evidence that Neanderthals not only fought but excelled at war is that they met us and weren't immediately overrun. Instead, for around 100,000 years, Neanderthals resisted modern human expansion. Why else would we take so long to leave Africa? Not because the environment was hostile, but because Neanderthals were already thriving in Europe and Asia. It's exceedingly unlikely that modern humans met the Neanderthals and decided to just live and let live. If nothing else, population growth inevitably forces humans to acquire more land to ensure sufficient territory to hunt and forage food for their children. And an aggressive military strategy is also good evolutionary strategy. But for thousands of years, we tested their fighters. And for thousands of years, we kept losing. In weapons, tactics, strategy, we were fairly evenly matched. Indeed, Neanderthals probably had tactical and strategic advantages. They occupied the Middle East for millennia, gaining intimate knowledge of the terrain, the seasons, how to live off the native plants and animals. In battle, their massive muscular builds must have made them devastating fighters in close quarters combat. Their huge eyes likely gave Neanderthals superior low-light vision, letting them maneuver in the dark for ambushes and dawn raids. Finally, the stalemate broke, and the tide shifted. We don't know why. It's possible the invention of superior ranged weapons, bows, spear throwers, throwing clubs, let lightly built Homo sapiens harass the stocky Neanderthals from a distance using hit and run tactics. Or perhaps better hunting and gathering techniques let sapiens feed bigger tribes, creating numerical superiority in battle. Even after primitive Homo sapiens broke out of Africa 200,000 years ago, it took over 150,000 years to conquer Neanderthal lands. In Israel and Greece, archaic Homo sapiens took ground only to fall back against Neanderthal counteroffensives before a final offensive by modern Homo sapiens starting 125,000 years ago eliminated them. This was not a blitzkrieg as one would expect if Neanderthals were either pacifist or inferior warriors, but a long war of attrition. Ultimately, we won. But this wasn't because they were less inclined to fight. In the end, we likely became better at war than they were. And this makes a lot of sense when you couple this mainstream academic hypothesis with the ancient astronaut hypothesis. Specifically, some of the accounts that exist in the ancient Sumerian cuneiform tablets. There we find stories of warring god clans that essentially used Homo sapiens for working and fighting. When one introduces the possibility that hominid evolution was greatly accelerated by the warring god clans through genetic manipulation using their own DNA, it is no surprise at all that the new Homo sapiens would be better suited to develop superior forms of tools, weapons, and strategies. They were so superior, in fact, that they wiped out nearly all their competition and became the current super predators on planet Earth. 